Um, I'm an alum of UMass Dartmouth, uh, CDPA. Graduated in 97 um, with a degree in sculpture. So um, after I uh, convinced my sculpture professor, Eric Mappella, to let me do a film for my senior thesis, that was it. I started to get into filmmaking and, and digital and ended up moving to Los Angeles for about 14 years. And now I'm back. Um, and I'm really excited about this class because as I was going through the um, syllabus, it really occurred to me. At first I thought, okay, it's just going to be about architecture, kind of straightforward. But um, the cool thing was that it's not. I mean, it's about creating, what I took from it was that it's about creating a sense of place through the creative act. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, that's really kind of, in a way, it's sort of like why I moved back to New Bedford after 14 years in Los Angeles. You know, you think, wow, Los Angeles, there's a lot of creative stuff happening out there and for film specifically. But what I found was that when I was away, well, actually, when I was here, in, from 1994 to 97, we went downtown for our, our studio classes. And so we spent a lot of time downtown, but we didn't have a star store. You all know about the star store, right? I mean, so we had this older building. Um, it was the, it's not a Quest Center. Did you guys talk about the Quest Center at all? No. It's like, it's sort of just out of downtown, a little bit north. And it was, oh man, it was crazy. Like, the pipes would leak. Everything was old. It was old, and it was not fixed up. But it was very creative. There was there were two sides to this building, um, and you could get from one side to the other through an underground tunnel. And people would uh, we we were told never go into the tunnel. Of course, we went into the tunnel. <laughs> so um, what happened was, like, I mean, one of these times, you know, we go in there, and what do we find? Remnants of the, a sculptural installation that somebody did a few years earlier, and they just left the pieces in there. Wow. And it was. Wow, so what we discovered from being downtown was layers and layers of time and usage and stories, right? But the thing was, at that time, there was no AHA night. Did anybody go to AHA night last night? Mm -hmm. It was hop hopping, wasn't it? I mean, there was like a lot of cool like outdoor installations going on. Live music, artificial marketplace had like that that band out on a couch on, on the street, which was cool. So, but none of that was going on back then. So, you know, we, every time when we were done with class, we would just pipe hill back to campus. And so, it was only when I was away in Los Angeles that this sort of renaissance, that's this, this creative placemaking, really started to snowball. And I'm sure it was happening when we were there, but we just didn't know it, you know? Um, but it really started to kind of bubble up and become prominent so that you know people from Dartmouth who weren't even involved in the school started to come downtown. Nobody would start, people weren't afraid they were gonna get shot. So it's baloney right that we I got I got friends that will come down to Bedford. They think they're gonna get shot. It's ridiculous. Um, so they, you know, that started to snowball as creative sort of placemaking. And while I was away, I had a few opportunities to come back every every year or every two years and do a project here. And I really got to know the place. Um, and so I just saw that this, this this amazing sort of like new kind of place beginning to reinvent itself in all these older buildings, all this this these older stories, and I you know I really want to know I grew up in Somerset. And this is the South Coast region from, you know, all the way down to Rhode Island and back up to here is my home. So why not just do it now? So a few years ago, I had an opportunity to make um, a video series for the school here called The New Faces of UMass Dartmouth. If anybody's seen those, mm -hmm. they were on the website. Um, and that really kind of allowed me to financially come back for about a year. So I set up shop downtown, I had my studio space there, and then when that was done, I said, I'm staying. And it's just been really fun. I mean, I've gotten to know um, so many people, um, and you, you begin to see, like, 
your experience is connected to people's experience, you know, five, 10, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Artists who are still working downtown, who are who have been involved when it was Swain School of Design, who um, John was here the other day. You know, he knows people that I know, you know, from another like community, and it's all like wow, we have this connection, which was cool. So I found that New Bedford really has this openness to the creative act. The idea of like, hey, you know, let's just try throwing paint up on the wall and see what happens. We need to reinvent ourselves. Let's be open to it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's really exciting. Yes. You know, and in Los Angeles, that's a little bit tough because you got so many people there, and, and it's not a sense of commitment. Everybody wants to get rich, you know, and then they, it's sort of transient, and it's very sprawling, you know, and again, there's layers of like physical stories underneath all that, but everybody just demolishes everything and physically build new. And I think that seeps into the mentality of how people interact with folks out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's tough. So, um, I know John the other day was saying that he, he's not sure that the creative community in downtown is really happening like it used to be, but I, from my perspective, I think it is. You know, I, I, I think there's a lot, lot of younger voices that are, that are in the area and beginning to create their own stories in new places, you know, um, new studio spaces, uh, opening up new storefronts. They might only be there for a year. Who knows? Hopefully they'll be there for, you know, years to come. But everybody's trying stuff. So that's the exciting thing about the Bedford for me um, and this class because it really feels like it's about transforming, like I said, transforming place through the creative act. Um, and that means that as artists and creators, we're not just making it for ourselves. I mean, in the first place, maybe we are, right? We're making something that satisfies us, whether it's a sculpture or a painting or a film or a drawing or, or, or a piece of writing or, or anything. We're, we're doing it for ourselves at first, but just like you throw a, a pebble into the, into the a, a, a pond, what you do ripples out, right? And it just keeps going. It's gonna affect everybody around you. Um, and I think that's important for us to, to realize as we create, you know, our own, our own future, our own present and future here in this, in this region. Um, I'll get into something specific here in a second. One more thought about that. When I was away, I began to realize that, you know, everybody says, where are you from? Oh, you tell me you're from Boston, you know, because it's close, it's the capital. And, and, and well, I grew up down here, and now I come back and I realize, my accent's not a Boston accent, it's a Rhode Island accent. We're like an extension of Rhode Island, really. You know, it's, and because of that, it's sort of like swept under the table, right? under the rug. It doesn't, we're swept aside by so many of the, the powers that be. We don't have the train anymore coming down from Boston. I mean, it's a struggle to get the train to come back, right? Why is that? You know, I mean, those are, there's a whole history to that. Um, and I think, a lot of times people can get down on, on it and say, you know, oh yeah, this is a poor part of the state and it doesn't really have a lot going for it. The truth is, maybe that is an opportunity because the pressure is off. Mm -hmm. We don't have to deliver and create our future the same way that the powers that be would like us to create. Right? We can do it our way. And show them. Aha uh -huh is a great example because, you know, that's, that is... is that is a, um, how can I say, it's an example of the creative economy, you know, showing that we can have a renaissance through the creative act, and it's actually used as an example to many other uh, gateway cities across the, uh, the state. So that's exciting, you know, we were able to do that, this community. Anyway, so that's, that's my thought about the perspective, right? Um, I'll give you an example. I wanted to, um, I think a, a few years ago, I, um, I had the opportunity to come back and make a film called uh, Homeland. Let me see, where can I go? And what I discovered when I was making this film, it was, it's just a short film we did, about 13 minutes. I'm not going to show uh, the whole thing. Maybe I'll show a clip or two. But um, we made it 
It's a short fictional film uh, made in a deli downtown, which is now Destination Soups. You know where that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It used to be on a roll, and uh, we filmed it there. And when I was making it, everybody got so excited. They were just like, wow, this is great. Everybody sort of came in. The city got involved. Um, uh, the artist community got involved. And the, what occurred to me was that when we make something, what happens around the project is just as important as the project itself. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like that pebble getting thrown into the water. Um, let me see if I can find a little something here. So basically, just to, I'll give you a quick, you see part, the acting in this is just very like, it's these two guys are not actors, but they were excited to do it, so we were just like, let's, let's, try, and, let's try and do it. We got a crew together. Um, we had about 30 extras who came to sit in the background and walk around outside the window. So the premise of the short film, as it was, was that uh, this guy, Kevin Medeiros, comes into a cafe, sits down, it's the only chair left, Sitting across from the stranger, they start to talk. And in his conversation, he begins to realize, maybe this guy is a little strange. He might have a bomb strapped on him. What does he do? Right? So the stranger begins to test him. Um, what would you do if you lived through this? And so that was the premise of the whole thing. Um, I bring it up because. <coughs> Which was sanitation and probably pumping shit out of the sewer 12 hours a day. I said I could get you help. And I'm sure she'd rather be doing anything other than pouring coffee for these poor souls all night. Look, I want help, right? Who needs help here, Kevin? So Kevin's the kid that sort of sits down and realizes what's going on. He's keeping an eye on the other guy's hands because maybe he's going to pull a cord. Not going to happen. If you wanted to talk, now's your chance. How are you going to talk me out of this? Don't do this. I'm not buying that. Just walk outside. I can't. I have a job to do. Please. Why? Why should I spare all these people in their miserable lives? They're not miserable. Are they happy? They're not unhappy. They look like zombies. They should be happy. They should be living every minute as if it were their last. So, what will you do if you live through this? You're a better wife, right? Strike two. Come on, Kevin. Those is a nine. What will you do if you get through this? Theater. 
um, and we'll show a bunch of short films from everybody that, that uh, we know and put a call out to put them so we can discover new talent mm -hmm. in the area. And we'll use it as a showcase for um, New Bedford downtown and we'll invite all kinds of VIPs. <laughs> We invited, we got, basically, we got like 600 people to come. Um, and, let's see. And it was a, we got the, 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 the um, artist community involved. Here, this is everybody that, that showed up. Everyone said that we couldn't get the Z to cooperate and say, oh, open the doors for this. And we said, well, no, 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 let's see what we can do. And we went to the city and we put a proposal together that this would not just be about our film. We called the night uh, Building Bridges to the Homeland, just that sort of catchphrase. But what we wanted to do was build this bridge between the arts, the film, um, and the city. And like I said, we had a bunch of uh, you know, politicians who, who were from the area, all across the South Coast to come down. And they saw all these films, this energy, this creative energy that was going on, on this 30-foot screen. And we put up all of our <coughs> uh, sponsors and downtown businesses and other arts. Um, we had a reception at Artworks, too, as well. So everyone had an opportunity. Hat Street Studios participated. Those are the open studios. Mm -hmm. And what was cool about that was it's, it, it People left there that night saying, wow, this is happening? This is happening here? Again, it's transforming place through the creative act. Um, we went on to do a few other things where we, um, we had this event called So Code to So Cal, where we took three filmmakers from uh, this area, and we paired them with um, three filmmakers working in Los Angeles, and it was all done online, so people could watch the films online and listen to this. This they, everybody was on Skype, so there was three filmmakers on Skype in LA, three filmmakers on Skype here, talking to each other about the benefits and challenges of making a film or anything really regionally here, as opposed to resource access. We have access to everything really in Los Angeles or a place like Los Angeles. The filmmakers in LA were stunned at how open the community was here. Mm -hmm. Filmmakers here were like, well, yeah, we can go down to a store and say, can we film? What would you, what can we do to, to collaborate with you? And the store owner would be very happy to, to participate because it's part of the community. Whereas if that happened in LA, the filmmakers there were like, yeah, the store owner would be like, okay, how much you want to, how much you have to use this location? He wants to get paid. And so there are so many opportunities. Anyway, so it was great to get these different groups together to talk. Um, so that's a little bit of my background um, in terms of filmmaking. At Out West, I did, uh, I was on set a lot, so I worked on the, the set of Heroes, a lot of TV shows like that, kind of documenting behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. So you'd see me on set uh, with a camera under my, my arm like this, and they'd be filming the actor, because they don't like to have, you know, the camera in their face when they're not working. But I needed to get, so there's a lens, right? And I needed to get them in these, these sort of practice positions where they're sort of like, you know, it's all that stuff you see on the DVD, how the behind the scenes, the making of, or mm -hmm. uh, the promotional stuff. So I found ways to sort of, you know, work within a system. Um, sometimes I could come right up to him and say, hi, okay, can you give me an interview? And we would do that. Um, but other times, it was, it was difficult. So that, that, that's what I did out there. These are some of my independent projects. Um, and then I also, because my background is in sculpture, um, and this sort of ties in with what you guys are doing. Um, it's, I, I've had a, a few projects in the last few years where I've sort of brought film and sculpture together. Mm -hmm. And um, one of them, through installation work, one of them was called, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Stratoscope Forest. And 
what this was, was an installation down in the Cape, and it deals with layers again, layers of time and land usage. Mm -hmm. And we see the stone walls down here, right? You ever walk through the woods, you know, deep in the woods, and you're know, like, where the hell did this stone wall come from? Because it goes for miles through. Mm -hmm. You know, have you guys talked about that? It, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, why, why are they there? They used to be my markers for where the land ended. Exactly. What was that land used for? Uh, farming. Exactly, right, right. I mean, what was it, like 70% of New England was, was farming at one point? Sheep. I'm sorry? Sheep. It was yeah. sheep farming, yeah? Sheep. Sheep, yeah. sheep, okay, yeah, yeah. And they were tall, weren't they? Because the sheep could, the livestock <laughs> could come, could, could jump over them, but they're much lower today because of time. They just fall apart, but they're there. Now our forests have like grown up over this. And we're in this part where this this phase where we're mostly it's mostly forest now, but we're cutting into it again with suburban sprawl. Mm -hmm. right? So this piece was meant to sort of help people get um, get a grasp of how we um, uh, impact and use our environment. And people were asked to participate and to interact with these pieces on the inside, where they could move these things around. They were sort of stylized branches and rocks. And they sort of fit into each other. So you could take a, a rock and place it on one of the branches, and you could balance the branches and move them around. Kind of like a big play set. And uh, it, I called it a fabricated forest. Um, but it was stratoscope forest because we could see layers of time and what we did in this installation because it was being filmed and projected back onto the space. So your actions in that space were being projected back down onto that space on a delay. Mm -hmm. So you can see what you did. I'll show you a quick clip here. filming the projection again, and projecting it back down a third time, and then project, filming it in fourth, fifth, and sixth. You know when you point the, uh, two mirrors into each other? It's just endless. It was the same idea, but the cool thing was that every time it filmed what it was, what it was projecting, it would get degraded. So it would just start to like disappear, get less and less visible, mm -hmm. like our actions and what happens underneath the space, right under our feet when we're walking through the woods or downtown, you know, through the uh, um, cobblestone streets, you know, and right under our feet. Who knows what that was used for? Um, but it's there. It's still the, the markers and the, the scratches and the, the paint and everything that John was talking about the other day, the, 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 the decay is there. It's not cleaned up, you know, and that's so cool. So this was a piece that, that sort of dealt with that. 
um, in terms of uh, uh, sort of land usage. Now, today, I don't, it's going to be tough because I got it on the other computer. Is, uh, oh, if this time I'll show you a little later. So basically, recently I just did another installation and where I filmed, um, I followed water from an urban area like Pew Bedford mm -hmm. down through the forests into the marshland down to South Dartmouth and out to the ocean. Um, and I wanted to talk about how the land itself is being used, uh, again, being cut into by suburban sprawl. Right? So what happens is when you walk into that, this is a second installation, I might be able to show you a little later. Um, you're surrounded by uh, three screens, TV screens. One was a 60 inch, so it was probably like this. Mm -hmm. you know, actually, there's four screens, so two like that. And you're totally surrounded by this environment as we follow water. Now, each screen shows us a different angle. One is always filming down, following the water this way. One is always up from underneath the water, up through the, the reflection of the surface. So we're looking at two angles like this on two separate screens. And then the other two screens are, one is always going forward into the space, into, you know, over the, the water. And the other one is following it on the side. So what do you see when you pass by, this is when you're going down a stream, right? You follow, you see the trees, you see the tall grass. Um, and it's, it's actually about a 14 minute piece that just kind of goes, and you're not meant to sort of view it from beginning to end as a movie. You're supposed to see it as more of a, a, an experience piece. So you go in there, people would sort of sit down and just kind of let the water roll over them in a sense, really, you know, as, as there's sound design and stuff like that. Anyway, so that's a little bit about what I do. Um, kind of straddle both worlds of film and uh, sculpture or um, physical, you know, 3D work. Um, and I had just have this love sort of space and place downtown. Um, now you guys, you have a project this weekend, right? Oh, we gotta go out and film. All right. Well, a lot of them have already done that. Oh, you have? Okay. Um, and we would like to talk about some of the projects. Yeah. If possible. Absolutely. Um, while I'm trying to show some of them, if you have any questions or not, as you were videotaping your slides, perhaps you had some questions. Uh, so please share those things with us. Yeah. Any questions, concerns? They, they, they were in groups, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody works in groups? Okay. I brought some of my equipment to just to kind of look through. But what did you guys use to film with? I used my iPhone because that's what I had to film with. Excellent. But the only question I had was our lot that we have is just full of overgrowth. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to get like some of the interesting details. Okay. I was wondering how to, like, I know filming the entire space just to get understanding, but how would I get, like, some of the good details if people understand what they did the first time? This is a good point. Is this yours? Yeah. Okay. city is this in? This is not in the Is it the north end? Like up towards it's Church and Chaffee Street. Okay. Um, um, it's Sabres. It's really close by. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, I was yes. looking at like maps that was like more north end, like at the end of the Akushnet River. The Akushnet River? Yeah. Yep. <coughs> gotcha. I know, I know where it is. Yep. It's sort of near King's Highway, right? Yep, yep. So these are the... Uh, this is this is our lot. This is the lot. Uh-huh, okay. So the other was, that was the surrounding area, and this is the lot itself. Yeah. Okay. Check yourself for the takes afterwards. 
Uh-huh. And you guys are. That's great. So it's it's concrete. Is that it? It was a chunk of concrete. I'm sorry? It was chunks of concrete and a bunch of just junk and gotcha. I think those large pieces are stone. Mm -hmm. um, and they were sort of surrounding the, the lot. So okay. like a perimeter. Gotcha. I think it was like a parking lot. So let me ask you this. This is great. Um, your, your question about showing why, because the, the iPhone is, shows why, naturally. It's, it's just a very wide lens, right? Um, it might be important to, like you said, go in and find those details, right? Um, and that was actually the point that I brought, uh, brought up, I think, I don't know if we talked about it the other day. How do you, how do you get back and get in, right? Because we see, mm -hmm. those David Hockney photographs where all the photographs are all put together yes, to make yes. one big thing. Sometimes he's got one photograph and it's actually like really big at the corner of his table, but the picture is still the size of what it should be. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that and how we, see, we don't necessarily see um, uh, the way the camera sees, right? We sort of like, and this was mentioned in the lecture the other day. How we, we, we what we see is an amalgamation of, of, of experiences. So right now I'm just focused in on that camera, right? So it's like boom, I go to that camera psychologically, but now at the same time I'm taking in this this wide angle with everybody. If I focus in and speak with you, I here I am. It's like a close up, but I still see everybody. How can we do that on film? Maybe instead of having a handheld camera all the time which I think is probably what you're doing most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. Slow down. Slow down. Duct tape that camera onto a, a, a tripod of some kind. You know, it's, it's the phone. Can I see the phone? Yeah. You got a nice, yeah, you don't want to put duct tape on that. But if you could put a padding or something onto it, right? And just focus in. Think of what you're doing film-wise as still photography. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be moving. The movement can, and probably should in this sense, because you, you're being descriptive, right? Have a motivation. So what is the motivation behind the move? And if there isn't one, just kind of slow down, take it easy. Say, all right, here's some cracks. Here's that big rock that, 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 that you guys asked about, right? And just kind of frame it up. Now, if you've got this duct tape to a to a, a tripod, right? Very easy over here. You can then just do a, a slow pull up, a reveal of that that detail. Now we're big again, right? Because here we are, very close. You're gonna have to get in there with an iPhone. You got to get in there. You can't necessarily stay back. You have to get dirty and say, so, okay, if it's this thing, you only get right here because you don't have a zoom. There's no zoom on it, right? You know, there's that new camera phone that has a zoom, but uh, has that funny commercial, but I don't know if anybody has one yet. Right? So slow down, frame it so that, and think of it, count to yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now you've got your shot. Take that time, you're going to have, when you go back in to edit it, you're going to have nice long handles at the beginning and the end of the shot, and you want those, right? You want those, those pieces. Um, and again, if you want, like I said, if you if, if, let the move be motivated. If you want to show this detail in relation to what's behind it, why, maybe the move is just to tilt up, right? And you see where it was. I just talked over everybody else's. I'm sorry. Did we go to the next one? No, um, there's another very interesting one. Yeah. This is uh, more artistic, um, and it tries to capture the history of Gamsara Milk as well as its Ooh. current yeah. situation. And there's also music, which is very interesting. Cool. So we would appreciate some feedback on sure. this one.
Shots where you sort of walked up, and this was before the, uh, the still shots. Mm -hmm. Those shots sort of they began. I I was like, okay, that's cool, but when are we going to get somewhere? And you mm -hmm. finally got somewhere when you when you started to show the still photos, right? You could probably cut a lot of that stuff before that down. Okay, it's this long. Let's cut it right down. Spend time, and then you you can still stay within your two and two and a half minutes. Um, but yeah, that idea of the stills, I think, are wonderful. Um, especially because when you were walking, I saw those vines growing up over everything, right? It just was like, oh, it's taken over. That's cool. But I didn't have a chance to really experience that until the still photo or the still shot of it came up. Um, so that's one thing. What about, what is, what is, what might the meaning be? That's a good question. What, what do you want to say about this mill? Relation to what you've studied. What's the thesis? Oh. Please. Well, we 
were thinking about turning it into like uh, the sideways escarpments that go up buildings and then using it for that purpose. Ah, so you're transforming the space, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. I got you. So those vines growing up really like they, they I should come back to that. That's like that's a wonderful uh, I mean it's already almost doing it itself, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's what you want to do with the space. So this, the, the, the thesis of this video is going to be how you will transform this space. Um, yeah. It's a proposal. <laughs> that's a good proposal. Okay. Drawings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's wonderful. I think it's. I, I, one thing I was, I was going to say, you know, video voiceover is so easily overused. If you can do it visually, yeah. then that would be wonderful. You know? I don't know. That's Absolutely. just my opinion. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. But also, in a way, as Don aptly mentioned, um, you, it's almost like writing a paper. Okay, It's a visual manifestation of your paper for this class that you have to have a thesis. You have to have an introduction and a conclusion. You have to make your point. You know, nobody is interested in reading a paper that just describes one sort of uh, meals, right? Everybody looks for the point, right? What is the point? What's the point you're making? Um, and so I think that while you're doing that, uh, while you're careful and conscious of the artistic aspects of the video, also think about the intellectual narrative that you want to uh, include in that. Yeah. That's a great point. When I, when I edit uh, a piece, um, would I say I'm, ed say I'm editing something that has a series of interviews? Uh -huh. Might be different than this because there's no speaking in this. I don't even. What you guys have here is what's called B-roll. The B camera, meaning it's it's what you it's what you're going to show to uh, illustrate what what somebody is saying. Mm -hmm. I don't even deal with the B-roll at first. I deal with just the interview, and I chop that up into cohesive thesis. And that's one like stream, one thread that goes throughout. And then the B-roll sits on top of all that. And it's those two like steps that I go through before I start to kind of make it all work together. But I take it one step at a time. Now in your case, you don't have a speaking, anything, anybody speaking, but what is the thesis? The idea of maybe having a, a script or an outline of what you want to say, you know. Um, I would even st sit down and write it out first, but then take it from that to a storyboard, you know, where you can t split your paper down the center. This is your script on one side. On this side, what, how are you going to show that? You know, that's one step at a time, I think. And then the other thought I just had was, you said, um, where are you going with it? The beginning and an ending to that thesis that's running throughout, but this that's like the big umbrella. And that theory, I think, extends straight down in, even into your shots, the detail of the shot. Again, if, uh, if you're showing something and the camera's gonna move, what is the beginning of that shot? And where's the end of that shot? Mm -hmm. you know, um, that, these are all ideal. Sometimes you just see something and the camera goes, right? You know? But if you're thinking along those those terms, it'll happen. So, you know. Excellent. Any any other questions? For um, I'm sorry, we don't have uh, more time to look at more projects. But if you have any questions now that Don is with us, please take advantage of the opportunity. Are we at the end of the class? Yes. Already? It's a it's a 50 minute oh, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, guys. Don, do you have any last thoughts or last uh, ideas that you want to share with us? Um, well, other than this is just wonderful because you this you really discover your, your place. Um, I would just say like when I'm out filming, I I go in with an idea, but I'm very open to what I see and I, what I discover. You know, um, and the idea may completely change, and that's okay. That's okay. But if the more you're prepared for uh, understand that idea of knowing your, your, your subject, the more opening we'll be able to, when, when something happens that's very serendipitous, you'll be able to capture it. Ah, this is what I want to say. 
moments. If you can create moments, uh -huh. then we remember, okay? Is there, when you're out there, is there a bird that flies up and lands on something? That's a moment, right? That's a beautiful moment. But if it's not, with the still frames that you've got, if you can make a connection between that, that, that rusted out circle that was in the wall, wall to something else visually, it could be another circle somewhere else. Hopefully it's related, maybe, but if it's not and it's just related visually, what you've done is you've created a moment between this energy between shots. And they're not just a series of shots, they're you're creating moments. And those moments are memories. And that's how people will, will say, ah, I want to go look at that again. So if that, if that helps. Excellent. I'll be here for a few minutes if anybody wants to talk. So. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much.